All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Math Lesson 80. Switching gears for a second, and we are talking about prime and composite numbers. So, a little bit of background information for you. A prime number are numbers that have exactly two factors, only one times that number. Like, if we wanted to list the factors of five, you'd only come up with five times one, right? There's only two factors, so five is a prime number. Composite numbers are numbers that have more than two factors. Like if I factored out eight, I'd end up with eight times one and four times two. It has four different factors, so they call eight a composite number. Now, the digit 1 is the only number that's considered to be neither prime nor composite because it only has one unique factor. The definition of prime is that it has to have only two factors. The definition of composite is that it has more than two unique factors. Well, one only has one factor because one times one is one. So it's neither prime nor composite. And if you take a look on page 517 of your book, they give you a handy dandy list here. And like say, number one is neither prime nor composite because it only has one factor. Two is the first prime number because it only has two factors, one times two. Three is the next prime number because its only factors are one times three. Four is your first composite number because you have one times four and two times two. Or five is the next prime number. You only have one times five and so on and so on and so on. So, Another thing we want to talk about is this word array. And what an array is, is a rectangular arrangement of objects in rows and columns, and they use them to show factors. Rows go left and right, columns go up and down. So if I was going to go and try to show the factors of 16, well, one of the factoring of 16 is 4 times 4. So I could make an array that's 4 by 4. I would have 4 rows of squares going across, and I have 4 columns going up and down. Or another way to factor 16 is 2 times 8. So I'd have 2 rows with 8. Or the other way to factor out 16 is 1 times 16. So I would have just one row with 16 squares in it, right? And just like when you're doing regular factors, if you have 2 times 8, you don't have to factor out or build an array for 8 by 2. You just have to focus on each unique arrangement. So the big thing they want you to take away from this is if a number can only be arranged into one array, it's prime. If you look at your factors of 4, you can go 2 times 2. So I could go ahead and start drawing a 2 by 2 array, right? Or another way to factor out 4 is 1 times 4. So I could go and make an array that is 1 by 4. If you went ahead and factored out 3, you'd only have 1 times 3. There are no other factors, right? So if I went and put that into an array, you would see that there's only one way to write an array. So 3 has to be the prime number. If a number can only be arranged into one array, it is prime. So they might want you to go and do something like this. Draw three arrays for the number 12. 
use different factor pairs for each array. Before you draw out your array, it's always a good idea to list out your factors. So I have 1 times 12, so I'm going to make an array that's 1 by 12. Another way to factor out 12 would be 2 times 6, right? So I better build an array that is two rows of 6. And the last way to factor out 12 would be 3 times 4, right? So I had better have an array that's three rows of four. So it is just about that easy. You might run into some questions like this, and there's a handy dandy chart on page 518 of your book. This question is going to ask something like, the first three prime numbers are two, three, and five. On your book, they listed all the numbers 1 through 100, and they circle all the prime numbers. 2, 3, and 5 are the first three prime numbers. And they want to ask you, what are the next three prime numbers? Well, looks to me like the next one I have here is 7. 8, 9, and 10 are composite. The next prime number I have is 11. So I better include him. And lastly, my third and final prime number that I'm looking for is 13. Should I let you in on a hint here? You will never have an even prime number. Because if it's even, you know that 2 is always going to be a factor of it, right? All right, so generally an easy enough concept. Now let's see how it's going to go and all be applied. Check out this problem. Starts off saying, list all the factors for 15 and 17. Okay, I always like starting with the easy one, right? 1 times 15 for 15. But just because a number is odd does not necessarily mean it is automatically prime. 15 does have two other factors in it. It's going to be 3 times 5, right? So that's not too tough. Now let's take a look at our other one for 17. Start off with the two easy ones. 1 times 17. Are there any two other factors multiplied together That'll give you a product of 17? Hopefully you know that answer is no. Now let's take a look at the next part of the question. It is saying, which number can be drawn using more than one array? Hopefully what we learned back a little while ago, well, 15 actually could be set up using more than one array, right? Now they want you to go and Show the arrays of both numbers and use the arrays to determine which is prime and which is composite. So the trickiest part right now is I have to show the arrays of both numbers. So let's get our arrays for 15 set up first. I have 1 times 15, right? So I'm going to need one row with 15 squares. So there I would have one row of 15. The other two factors I have are 3 times 5, right? So I better set up an array with three rows of 5. Down over here, a little bit easier because we only have two factors, so I only have to make one array. I need one row of 17. Once I have my arrays in place, the last little part, Determine which is prime and which is composite, right? Not too, too, too tough. Let's take a look. If I have more than two factors, this guy is composite. Down over here for 17, because he only has two factors, he is prime. Take a look here. What is the only number that is neither prime nor composite? 
Do you remember what it is? That was one. And they want you to tell why. Because it only has one factor. To be prime, the definition is it only has two factors. To be composite, the definition is it has more than two unique factors. One's neither prime nor composite because it has only one factor. And that is the end. You are definitely going to want to have your book out to take care of the Socratic quiz and good luck.